Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Joan of Arc. Our entrance hymn today is 553, Come Now is the Time to Worship, number 553. Please stand. First page twice, second page twice, and then back to the first page. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth.
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of, of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O oh Lord, my God, you have made me your servant king, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. For it. 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the finery, fine, fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They, replied, they answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The readings for today ask us to take risks and to uh, give everything to the Lord, give our all for the Lord. Now, I'm not saying I did that, but I did take a small risk and I got a lottery ticket for the WCQS raffle, but I did not win the car. So that's how it goes. I didn't even win any of the trips or whatever. So that was, but uh, anyway, I'm, I hope that the money went to good use anyway. It's a good thing to be, I think it's a good thing to be supporting public radio. Uh, there is, uh, uh, but there are people who really risk a lot more than just that, a lot more than just that. And I'm not talking about the person that puts a couple of dollars and hopes to win the lottery. Um, 
thinking about people that really risk everything, really risk everything. One of the things that came to mind, and I don't know if you ever watch any of these shows on TV, they have these, these poker shows. And when someone gets what they think is a really good hand or they can come up with a great bluff, they are all in. They push all their chips to the center and they say they're all in on this thing, all in. That's the kind of risk that the Lord wants us to make. He wants us to be all in when it comes to him. He doesn't want us to just be halfway or just be partial. You might even think about uh, the gold rush in California, how people risked everything to travel to California to try to, in, to, try to uh, uh, make it rich, uh, uh, hit it rich by uh, discovering gold. They left everything behind and went for that. And that is the kind of attitude that we are to have towards the Lord, giving everything, putting our entire selves into what we are doing. It's kind of like uh, Solomon. You might think about Solomon for a minute. Here he is. God is coming to him and really asking him, you know, whatever you want, I'll give you. I'm sure there are tons of things that he could have asked for. Maybe tons of selfish things. Maybe he was going to ask for a long life. Or we hear to, to uh, be rid of his enemies, things like that. But instead, what does he do? He asks for wisdom. He asks for wisdom so that he might be a good servant of the Lord, a good servant of his people, that he may be able to judge wisely, that he may be able to make good decisions and lead the people that the Lord has chosen. He, he gives up, his Solomon gives up so much, he could have asked for just, just anything, anything at all from the Lord. But what he asks for is the unselfish thing, the thing that is good for the other. And that's a wonderful model for us as Christians to uh, be willing to give whatever or, or to, um, to seek and to give of ourselves completely for the benefit of others. It's like that treasure in heaven that we, that, that treasure that we hear about in the, in the gospel today. Again, everything is given so that that treasure might be obtained, that pearl of great price. I think for us, the pearl of great price, the thing that we seek is the kingdom of heaven. And the key to that treasure is that we do everything with that in mind, with that inheritance in mind. Our faith tells us to do this. And we have to treasure that faith. We have to make use of that faith. It can't just be a faith that we just occasionally turn to, maybe just on Sunday, maybe just on special holidays. It's not like a precious heirloom that is hidden away for most of the year and then just comes out every once in a while. No, it has to be in the center, it has to be the centerpiece of our life. It has to be there like we perhaps we would put it on the center of a uh, dining table so everyone would see it all the time. Well, well, maybe not all the time, but when you eat, <laughs> at least. But there would that, it'd be that reminder that that's why we do things. That's what we treasure. That's what we want. So we have to be willing to take that risk, though, to give up everything else for the sake of our faith. And not an easy thing to do. It's easy for us to want to cling to other things, to material comforts or any of a number of things, any, any things that leads us in the path of sin, leads us to just be focused on ourselves and not to be concerned about others. You know, I was thinking, um, I had to talk with my financial advisor recently because of um, the, uh, my father's estate. And um, he asked me uh, what my risk tolerance was. I was thinking about my risk tolerance. For Christians, 
we tolerate a lot of risk. We take a lot of risk. We know the reward is great, but we know that the reward is only available to us if we risk everything for it. We must put our entire lives into it. Otherwise, if it's not the primary thing, if it's not the thing that we are ultimately concerned about, it can be so easily lost. One of the things that uh, we have to keep in mind when we're thinking about this, this uh, great gift that we have, the kingdom of heaven, is that it is not just something that we long for. It's not just something that will happen ultimately to us. It's a treasure that we already have. If we want to live in the kingdom, then we risk everything. We risk all of those things that would lead us away from the kingdom. And when we do that, we live in the kingdom already. We make the kingdom present in the selflessness that we demonstrate, in the good that we do. That willingness, so it's not just a future reward, though we do uh, pray that the Lord will receive us into the kingdom, and we do keep our focus on that, but it can still be experienced even here and now. And we shouldn't just um, only think about the kingdom in terms of something that awaits us at the end of our earthly life. The best expression, I think, of that treasure for us is the presence of Jesus and that special presence that we recognize in the Eucharist. We have this opportunity at every Mass to come and worship the Lord, to participate in his sacrifice, and then to take him with us, this great treasure, this great treasure. It should be a reminder to us of God's presence with us and how Jesus wants to be with us and wants us to have what we need to receive the kingdom. But again, it should also be more than just an occasional thing or just a thing that we only think about from time to time. That presence comes into us and with Jesus inside of us, with a consciousness of that presence, it makes, I think, more, it makes it easier for us to recognize that we are already living in the kingdom, that we are already empowered to follow him and to be selfless as he, as he was and to bring that good about in our world. So take that presence with you today. As you receive Jesus, remember that this is the promise of the kingdom, but not just the promise. It is given to us so that, uh, so that we might be reminded, certainly, of the kingdom of heaven that we hope to inherit, but also the treasure that we have here and now, the treasure that only comes into being if we share it in the good that we do, risking everything for the good of others. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we come before the Lord now with humble hearts. For all who minister in the church, eager to share its lasting treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wise leaders and brave public servants, working patiently for peace in a violent world, we pray to the Lord. For all who work in difficult, unjust conditions, seeking fair pay in a safe environment, we pray to the Lord. For those who care for the sick and the dying, showing the Lord's love in their daily actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of this assembly, teaching adults how to trust in God's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for Ukraine. We pray for uh, a just and lasting peace to be established there. We pray to the Lord. We offer the Mass today in memory of Francis Stewart. We pray to the Lord. Uh, please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, you offer eternal joy and freedom. Grant what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, baskets are available in the narthex uh, for regular offertory and set collections. Our offertory hymn is number 410, Lord of All Hopefulness, 410. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Communion hymn is number 438, Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with life, love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Following all Masses this weekend, the St. Joan of Arc Library will be open. A Catholic daughter will be available to answer your questions. The Knights of Columbus are collecting clothing for a Western North Carolina Rescue Mission. There is a corner in the narthex for all donations. The Knights will be hosting, here it comes, a pancake breakfast on Sunday, August 13th, following the 10 o'clock and noon masses. So for those who are not watching their weight, here we go. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, confirmation classes will be August 16th at 6 p.m. These classes are separate from the regular faith formation classes. Contact Tim Kelly with any questions. His number is in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 533, Let There Be Peace on Earth, and we will be singing the optional text. Mm -hmm. 